I'm gonna go in here and make sure we're good. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Looks like we got some people in. Three. All right, let's go to let's see we got the sound. Do we have yeah, we got sound. Okay. <clears throat> All right, welcome uh, Teresa LaFrey Rivera, H Heather Nielsen, Deborah Denori, Raquel McVeigh. Yeah, Jody Lee's in the house, Catherine Hauser. Yeah, she says, Holy cow, three interviews today. Well, that's that's a normal day for us. <laughs> Amy <laughs> Brown, Donna Davin, Anna Reuter, Shane Cadell, and Cindy Aldridge. 26 people in the house. Annette Amoroso, how you doing? Gretchen Gusky, Heather Houston, Marcy Dupost, and Jennifer Peters. So, yeah, we were just talking before the show about what's what's going on and what's coming. And Rick asked me, "Welcome back, Rick Jewers. It's always it's always a, a pleasure to do a, a collaboration with you." Thank you, Todd. Thank you, thank you for coming. Well. Yeah. Welcome. These shows resonate. Would you please share. Uh, we're doing a little bit better against the algorithms. Okay, so yeah, we were talking, and Rick asked me. Uh, he hasn't been able to watch any of the shows. He's he's been out there doing the work like so many people, and he said, you know, are the guests talking about the fact uh, that seems to be more and more evidence that the collective awareness expansion, whatever, is growing, and that something's very imminent. And I would say yes. There's been a lot of congruency in the shows, the last sixty or seventy shows since early January. And uh, in one way or another, people are saying that in their own personal experience and what they're seeing in the collective. So I'm going to throw this one back on Rick and let's talk about what's imminent from your perspective. What are the signs that it's headed that way and so on? OK, well, what is imminent? What I'm given uh, from mother, father, what I'm connected to in council, again, just to refresh, refresh the viewers, you know, uh, whatever you wish, that is my connection. What I'm given, what is imminent, is a, a type of RV in a quantum financial system that we can access interdimensionally uh, in the beginning here. So what I'm giving, given is that uh, you are now actually in a duality, a lot of you, that you can access the 4d and the 5d at the same time but again i use these labels of the 5d because this is where uh also your your quantum financial system or ease to financial um assurity or security is achieved by those light workers uh, that are able that their vibration is compatible with this 5d that they're able to go in there and uh fluently move back and forth uh on a free will basis between the two timelines uh mm -hmm. there are still many that are <clears throat> they're on a 4d uh, a 4d existence but they can occasionally go into the 5d or if you will peer into it uh, where they're seeing, uh, you know, like uh, things in the sky, uh, you know, uh, hearts and clouds and things. So some of them can see it from the 4D, while others are actually going in the 5D and, and seeing the phenomenon of such. But what is transpiring is that uh, there are very distinct and clear, uh, you could call them doorways and paths, that bridge, this is the 5D, this is the 4D, that bridge between these, that actually you can walk into the 5D, and what I'm tentatively given here, because this is still developing, that you can walk into the 5D, uh, uh, get a sense of financial security, that you can walk back down in the 4D and temporarily, continue your light work with assisting the others, if that makes uh, sense. So what I'm given 
is that there is at least in the minimum uh, some timeline that each can access dependent upon the vibration uh, to access more of a, uh, a financial security one to, to alleviate the financial distractions that many have so they can put more of their focus and their energy into assisting the other ones. As we all know, uh, with this ascension, uh, one of the main things was that financial level where so many, uh, you know, they were just stripped of everything they had, which was for very good reasons to uh, integrate, integrate the discipline that they would require, uh, again, on temporary levels. Everything with this ascension uh, is temporary because, uh, again, we evolve out of here on so many levels. I know yeah. you have questions. I'll stop. Yeah, no, no <laughs> I want to go back to the, because I, I think maybe Morgan and I can relate to this a little bit. We haven't talked about it. So I want to go back to get some clarification on, from your perspective, as the best you can, what it means. Okay, so what is quantum RV? What is, what is it to go step into the 5D? Because I know there's many of us doing that. It is, it is a back and forth deal. Uh, when you say to go in and get some financial security at the 5D level, are we talking about a consciousness and a state of absolute belief and understanding that we're going to be taken care of and you step back on the 4D timeline and you go about your business. Is that what uh, you're talking about? It's more than that. You're taking the physical actually in there that you have the material. You're bringing the material financial security back into the 4D with you okay. that you are financially sustained. So it's different. It's not, it's above what we used to call the universal flow. Once you surrender, uh, then you're always provided for by that universal flow where right. uh, things would be directed to you, like for you with your computer and where you needed to get moved to. That was a universal flow that you connected in to support you. So yeah. in that sense, you, were, you had to surrender uh, to such a degree to receive and connect in with that universal flow. Yeah. But this is yeah. different. Now it's different in such a way that you are going to be able to physically walk in physically into this other timeline and dimension and retrieve physically and manually what you may require to fulfill your purpose on the lower timelines. Very cool. So we yeah, do that. We do that in dimension. We do that in dimension with conscious thought, conscious intent, and then we 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 bring it back with us. Is what's happening? Is that right? Uh, actually, yeah. You create it to be a reality that you can bring the reality back into the lower timelines. But again, uh, your your access to that is your multi-dimensional ability and empowering yourself and strengthening your total being in your light body. And, you know, again, uh, your purity depends on so many things like your virtue and, uh, you know, uh, unconditional love is, is really in your belief as well. So it's all of these things in conjunction with each, with each other that empowers your multidimensional abilities allowing smoother access while in the physical vessel to these other dimensional timelines. Yeah. 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 I can, I, I get a, I get a, a feel for what you're saying. I know we've been on a journey and things just keep happening. Mm -hmm. uh, they come into our flow or we go into the flow. I'm not really sure how this is working, but going back to what you were saying, it's all predicated on, uh, your your connection, the expansion of your multidimensionality, really, uh, it sounds like to me what we've all been doing, which is as things are presented to us, call them shadows, call them patterns, call them whatever, things that make us uncomfortable, we move to that zero point of integration and pure unconditional love, pure intention, and uh, the highest good for all. 
kind of a vibration and, and then in that vibration you're kind of in this flow now you're taking it a little bit further to where we can actually go in with conscious effort and uh and start to manifest it sounds almost immediately what we create at the 5d yes and and, and that is so important and that is part of my mission here is to uh to create the next level and to get the sub creators in line to know that it is access accessible and to create it to combine their energies but they don't do it on a blind faith way uh what happens and what occurs you have your you, it resonates you have your uh, synchronicities in your outward individual confirmations that you receive to know that it's so so that yeah. you have no doubt because you cannot let's say per se be in a level of bigger creation when you still have doubt in things yeah. and as you mentioned earlier to do that also uh for to be a, a a creator that is in line with all of the good things we want you have to eradicate these dark and negative things because yeah. to keep it simple if if you have darkness that you have not confronted and overpowered and mastered then when you're given these higher creational abilities you will be contaminating with the same darkness and the same negativity uh, so it's just not allowed it does not work that way so before you yeah. get up into your sub creational way and i suggest for all viewers to test this and that's the way you can very quickly see what you'll be allowed for some of you if you have not cleared all of your negativity and darkness upon your attempts of trying your creational powers very quickly what you will see is you'll be creating dark and negative things attached to you and that is your confirmation in your inclination that you must address what is within your energetic field within your belief which is in your essence that is negative and is darkness because the negativity and the darkness is your anchor to the lower dimensions it's what keeps yeah. your veil down yeah. and keeps you here yeah, and I think uh, we went through something today that might be useful too. Uh, we're we're definitely uh, al you know un aligned with what you're what you're saying. Uh, you know, I, I think everybody would explain it differently or feel it differently, or receive it differently. But so we've we've kind of been at that spot where we're flowing, and it's a little bit trying. It's gotten easier. It's a little bit trying on the human aspect. But uh, this is kicking it up to another level, and we've kind of experienced that. And I won't go into to detail. What I wanted to share with everybody is, is we, we actually woke up this morning, and we were faced with uh, something that was something that was kind of a block in the human aspects path. And the block could also be seen as a guarantee, uh, you know, as a three D guarantee, or as a uh, you know. Uh, but definitely, definitely something that was not uh, uh, was not going to expand our 5D uh, awareness and experience and abilities. So what happened was we sat together and we decided let's remove this block and let's take a leap of faith together and uh, and and know that we're going to we're by, by by removing the block and taking the leap into the 5d into the magic knowing it's going to be reciprocated uh which is not the pattern we've all had for so many years it was always you know guarantee this guarantee that stepping stones in that fashion but it was a very powerful experience and i would say probably probably not probably the most powerful one we've had and we don't even we haven't even got through it all yet we haven't really received it all yet and felt the impact of it but it seems important to take human action uh, in alignment with our higher higher aspect or our 5d aspect totally uh, totally agreed and you know as you're witnessing as as well as everyone you you are divinely guided 
and it is assured that we all get there but there are so many different paths in unique situations and we are all in line with the divine plan uh, divine plan it's just that there's so many tributaries that connect into it uh, from each individual and groups but eventually we do all converge uh, when all the missions are completed and this is yeah. why you'll find variations within uh, all of the groups but uh, and and i have to emphasize this yet again even though there's variations in certain beliefs and perspectives among the groups they are all correct and they are perfect for the ones that are at those levels they need it is to assist divinely those ones to deal with uh whatever may be common with them to perspect it and overcome it in their way and it and again it it, it is for anyone to judge another group or another individual you're wasting your time because everyone is correct and, yeah. and it's correct for their perspective so to save each one a lot of time you know continue on empowering yourself with you know everything that resonates with you and and, and that is the best way and then keep connected with yeah. all the ones of your group you're like-minded and keep going up out of this uh, yeah as you shed the layers you rise uh you might be resonating with this group but uh let's say if you advance that this group is here to assist ones that are coming are just awakening once you advance you leave that group you go to another one to pick up something else you may need so you keep following your guidance you are always it, you are divinely assured that you are on your right path, but to make it easier for you Recognize something when it's a block. Don't go that way. You take uh, The easiest path with that Unless yeah. you are drawn and intertwined right into that block Then you observe it neutrally and see what it is there that you have to do and that's when your virtue the patience is very valuable to you because if you can come to a in a block if you can come to a sense of just neutrality and weed out the chatter and have the patience and know that it's divinely occurring then the answers and the assistance comes to you much quicker so that you're able to digest and understand the dynamics of what is occurring so that you can advance further with that. Yes. Yeah. What I suggest. Yes, thank you. And and there, you know, the one common thing that has been from a, the beginning has been, of course, we call it shadow work or inner work. Seems to be, you know, some people use the term turn the corner in the past month of these shows something's changed one of the things that i'm noticing is it's not like i'm finding and even talking to other people finding some deep uh, deep rooted thing that we hadn't cleared I'm not saying that that's not there but what seems to be happening is the chatter's still there it's not as loud as it was things appear and we're able to put them to rest and keep them moving forward and i guess Much i guess quicker. yes yeah so i just want to preface this uh, question uh, with that that uh, and also because I've had some people say oh well I'm in trouble and yeah well we're all in the same boat don't overestimate what you're or uh, overestimate what you're going through we're all going through the same thing uh, and so you know give yourself a break and, and give yourself some credit you're getting the work done but we know it's an individual journey and going into the question you talked about signs uh, of something imminent and more evidence out there it's more palpable uh, and a lot of people have been talking about this do you have any specific things that you can share with us in regard to the collective experience that are proving uh, evidential that something is imminent not concrete yet no not concrete uh, but there let's say for what i'm receiving it's at our 
fingertips that I know it is there. We just don't have any conviction documentation right in this now yeah. of it. But I am anticipating by the signs we're getting that it is right here, that it is tangible. Yeah. And having said that, it, it has sped up that closeness to it that uh, it has to be very close at hand. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, like you said, there's a there's a lot of things happening. I think uh, even the last time I talked to you, before the last time I talked to you, would have been um, I want to say around the 17th, 18th of January, a few days prior to that super eclipse and all that, a couple of days prior, and we we actually and, and we posted it, Morgan posted it on my page and her page, a portal that appeared, a dimensional porter portal that appeared above the house we were staying in. Oh, beautiful. Uh, nobody else saw it. Uh, we we put pictures out on it. It was definitely not, it was definitely an off planet to use that term or, or other dimensional type of thing. But it, the, the specific message that we received then was doors. Doors are opening. We did a session the next day and we were shown that there was an entire new universe, so to speak, at our disposal and that we all have the ability to connect with these celestial beings, planetary objects, these things that carry knowledge, wisdom, different specificities, different specialities. And I think that's kind of been continuing in the messages we've been receiving is that we've got more and more support. There's more uh, higher skills and abilities and awareness at our disposal. And the, the I don't say the trick, but the way to ignite that and to further it and to expand it is to actually move with it as opposed to trying to keep one foot in uh, an old an old paradigm, it's it's really a leap of faith. It's what we're doing to a to a a higher degree than we've ever done before. All of us. No, totally. Yes, it, it, it's very indicative. We did reach another level. Yes, and uh, you know I don't know have the exact date, but we are reaching actually just going up levels and levels, as you said. But also, Todd, why this is occurring. Uh, so many more are becoming empowered, and, and the collective is growing. Yeah. And as the collective grows and you add each one's creational energy into this collective, it's having rapid and immense change. Yes, mm -hmm. on the lower timeline. So many are stepping up, and, and, and that is so. And let me say, you know, also... Uh, what I've been put notice, uh, I'm seeing also reflections coming from what I would call the 4D, that it is advancing through the scientific communities. Uh, you know, for instance, they're putting out, okay, now here you have the scientists believing that we are light, uh, that uh, the consciousness does not die. You know, the scientific community is actually integrating the truth now to give to the public. Also, you have the doctors, and this is a very important one, you know, that uh, was shared just the other night, a, a, a medical doctor diagnosing someone with a spiritual awakening that they didn't need any pills or anything because wow. what they were going through, it, it, was, it was beginning. So what I'm given from the energetic imprint of that, from that doctor, you know, it was that inner knowing of what really was occurring, what you need to look at now with this ascension is that it's a natural evolutionary process of the physical vessel. And, and it's being recognized into the 4D, but it's also being recognized because we are seeding and integrating it. We rise up, we get the information, we come down and we seed it into the lower timelines to it rapidly bring it up and to raise the rest of humanity and to awaken those that are supposed to be awakened so we we are having great success and the confirmations are out there so yeah. it, it depends on what you wish to look for as written but you will find the signs uh through your perspective when you do look yeah. Yeah. And I think that, I think a great thing to reiterate at this point is the importance 
and the significance, I mean, of, of the work that we do in our own universe, our vessel, you know, in our, our own mind, body, spirit, because each time that we're elevating and expanding, we're actually contributing to the elevation and expansion of the collective. And this is what you're referring to. Yes. It would, yeah. it would only make sense that the level of light uh, as it expands is going to be proportionate to whatever entity you're looking at, be it a governmental entity, the science community, the medical community, or whatever it may be, that that level is expanding everywhere. So maybe on one hand, people might say, okay, well, you know, they're putting this out there in the mainstream and they're putting this out on the mainstream. You might have to take a double look at it. But a lot of this alternate news is reporting stuff like you're talking about. And we've actually heard some stories here over the last year uh, that have to do with those type of things. But that's the first time I've heard uh, and that's very promising. That's the first time I've heard a doctor actually say that somebody's just awakening. There's nothing medically wrong with them. Yeah. That's fascinating. Just so, just so beautiful. But, you know, as we know, and many of us that have been on this journey, and what you'll find is that the alternative news, it, its track record is amazing as being, you know, very close to 100% correct. And, you know, in the first times when uh, – things were put out and I, and I watched this as well but you know with the alternative news there were things put out uh, several years ago that people would look at no that's nuts it's fake news and all of this mm -hmm. but what we have seen no it, it is real it comes into fruition and now you know you have the documentation on it and but what you're also seeing uh, with your mainstream medias, uh, really, we control them. They, yeah. you know, they used to suppress things, yeah. but we control them in a way now that they cannot. The alternative news is, is getting much bigger as the collective is growing and supporting that, and you have the mainstream. You know, they are going to implode, or they must um, shift. They, yeah, they must shift. There is no choice with it. Well, I think the other thing that you bring to light, too, is, be, you know, it's one thing to have the awareness that we're multidimensional, one thing to have awareness of the five dimension and higher. Uh, many of us have, have been involved in, in dimensional work you can call it grid work, call it whatever you want to call it uh, over the last few years. But the importance of that, when you talk about we control them they don't control us that's a fact it we is. control everything and so uh, again i think it's a great time to remind everybody including myself that it's very important and maybe the most powerful thing that we can do one of them at least is to go out there with conscious intention in dimension and and do the work you know be it to uh, break down the false financial system or be it to break down a lawless law or whatever the case may be and if nothing else, to further elevate our own our own self, our own awareness, uh, you know, to use the word healing or heal ourselves or whatever, we can do these things from the power of our imagination, which is the most real thing we have, and in the last place that we were told to look, you know. So, don't underestimate our power as creators, and it doesn't mean it's always going to be uh in the physical actions we take although those are very important when we align those with the dimensional work we've done yes and if i may you know uh analogically um may i say like you know be when you're at such a strength with your aura if it's out this far anything that's this close to you in the past you would affect in your reality but as you become stronger and stronger, what's, what is occurring, you are having much, much more vast effects on your reality. So again, you know, where everyone is placed globally that is ascending, uh, what is occurring, you're having the greater effects on the reality. And when it's all light, again, it, it pushes anything denser than that. It, it compresses it. And also, you could look at all of your protests, uh, you know, from people that are angry, that uh, it, it's compressing and causing the density. And this is also inadvertently because of the light is becoming, uh, you know, just so huge that 
these have to keep compressing till they implode and they no longer exist. But yeah. uh, what I'm about, you know, what I'm saying is that the more that each one empowers their self, the more light effect they are having on their piece of reality, wherever they may be geographically. And you're seeing that. And it, yeah. you know, your outward signs come with uh, what you're creating, where someone's at. They may, you know, look up and see an angel in the clouds, and there may be a couple around them will say, Do you see that? And they'll look up, and yeah, they'll see it. But actually, it's the individual and their connection to, uh, you know, the Godhead of what we are that we are the creators, that we are creating this as well. We are part and parcel with it. And Absolutely. The, more you, the more you believe and, you know, the more you strengthen yourself, anyone can attest to this that the more confirmations you receive and it, it, it becomes, you're at points now, and I did an interview uh, or actually, uh, Sonia and Linda did an interview the other day where we're saying it's not magic anymore. It's a reality. reality. So certain ones of us, you know, it is the reality, and it, it's become a norm, and, and it's and it's common. And uh, you know, we're living it. Uh, we're living it, but we're also transitioning it and building it stronger and integrating it within outward into our reality and and it's happening everyone's yeah. doing it yeah. yeah like you said you know we're we're actually living it and then the second part you talk about is anchoring it you know bringing it in because we are in a transition and those efforts accelerate the transition uh, for everybody yeah um, exponentially yes yeah the other thing that that you said to me well you had asked me are the people are the guests on the show talking about the same thing and i said yes you know to a degree in different ways but one of the things i have noticed a lot is on the comments in the last 60 70 shows there is a lot of congruency there with people experiencing the what used to be called anomalies or aberrations okay so we saw a, a, a a dimensional doorway as clear as day for two hours and took pictures there was a guest we had simone that had a rainbow she started working with rainbow energy just a couple of weeks prior and saw a rainbow outside of her door in long island and beneath that rainbow was an entirely different almost like an entirely different realm it was like a dome and there was another rainbow outside of it and everything was normal there uh people have made a lot of comments about these things and even even on this show right now, which is reminding me of it, so they are seeing the evidence of it. And again, to your point, that's not being created. That's created by them more than it. You know what I mean? I mean, like you said, it's it's hand in hand. Uh, we're we're creating these things, uh, even yeah. if we're not totally conscious of it. Yeah, it's created in conjunction with the collective, and with the collective in conjunction with overall divinity and god yes it, it's all created together in, in that respect and, and that's what we do but also you're given your confirmations the way this always like I, i've been a teacher with this and what always okay now this is from a teacher perspective with what i do what i do what occurs with I usually in the past is that, okay, I receive the information, uh, heads up, they tell me here's what's coming, that we are going to be given uh, this certain energy or creating these certain themes that will become common. And what you need to do, Rick, is go in and give the explanation and, and guide them to let them know what it's about and to also connect them to their own confirmation. So this is how it, so what divinity used to do is always give the cart before the horse. And then I would have to go in and attach the horse and assist. And that's the way that, that I had worked with this. And, uh, you know, we don't, uh, we don't impose or, 
you know, force this on any. And, and the way it's set up, they will come and you will offer the perspectives. And then, as always, if it resonates with them and with anyone that I teach, I say, you know, if this resonates with you, you go with it. But if it does not, that means it's not for you. But having said that, ones that come uh, before me that I assist, uh, it, it always resonates because they would not be put before me if it wasn't so. So, right. but to heaven to say that, uh, so many, many of the things in the past were put here first. I was given the information before they come so that I would be informed of what it was and how to explain it to the others. But what I'm seeing now is that uh, there are so many others that are receiving. Uh, they had advanced themselves enough that they're at these high levels that they are also receiving the instructions. So, um, and it's advancing so many more. So what you have is, uh, for instance, you know, you might only had a couple teachers in the beginning, but they taught the teachers how to be teachers. So now you got all kinds of teachers up here very rapidly teaching everyone and bringing them up there and this is also why it's expanding so quickly and uh, i'm very grateful uh, of the expansion when i look back uh you know when i was awakened and when i first come here in 2011 uh how it has expanded since and uh, you know, I, I knew what my divine mission and purpose was there, so I, I just kept doing it, putting it out when I was told, and, uh, you know, it, it's very beautiful to see it be created the way it is now at these <laughs> very uh, rapid levels, and, and we're just ascending amazingly. Yeah, and, and then we have had a few practitioners on over the last, uh, well, more than a few, but but a few of them have said that, you know, I asked them about their clientele and they mm -hmm. they said that they're getting a lot of people that are just waking up uh, that are actually coming to them. Uh, exactly. Sherry Gerard made a comment here to to uh, that aligns with what you're saying and what we experience today. Uh, she says, yes, we are now living it. We are embodying it and moving it forward. We are carrying it and anchoring it by planting seeds. And and that is that is the order of the day. You know, we've got the access now, we bring it back down. Today, I would, we had two huge episodes yesterday and we had another one today. And we walked out to the beach and, um, and I went for a little swim and because I knew I just needed to go in there and christen it or whatever. And, <laughs> Well, we both walked into the water, actually, <laughs> and, and that was pretty amazing. But anyway, so I, I went in to d just to do one, you know, one uh, body surf or whatever. But I heard distinctly, and, and speaking of the collective, it wasn't just to me. It was, you're, you, it's not that you can do it, you're doing it. And, and, and it was struck me because, because it's along the lines of what Cherie Sher Sher said and what other people have been saying on these shows in the comments and that is it's it's no longer out there it's in here you know and and it just takes the alignment of the conscious human aspect the conscious human to align the actions with that and of course the deepest action of the thoughts that we have presented before us and that we carry forward or don't carry forward yeah and your vibration as well, which is part yeah. of the, your consciousness, keeping that to, you know, the optimal that you can yeah. as well, because that is your, uh, your vibration is your keys to these other dimensions to keep yeah. it simple. Yeah. So that's how the, important it is. Yeah. The, the, uh, the number, the multitude of, of our team members, if you want to put it that way, uh, in the experience that we've had for the last nine or 10 weeks, this go round, uh, have been growing in numbers, growing and growing and growing in numbers. For me, uh, 
the connectivity and the clarity that's coming in from transmissions, whatever you want to call it, communications is, is stronger. Uh, and I got to believe that this is happening uh, everywhere. And based on the people that we're talking to from all different parts of the world and all different uh, cultures and everything, countries and all that, uh, they're all pretty much saying the same thing. Uh, although everybody has their own unique role and uh, might explain things differently, but it's the same frequency. It's the same vibration. It, it is. But also, you know, I believe what you're saying there is the importance of one's gathering. You are recognizing when you're physically gathering in one place, what it's creating and how it's uh, empowering each individual there as well, where the events around you, because you're gathered and you're becoming stronger, that you're receiving more of your own messages and more beautiful interdimensional things like a portal being created as a result of, of you gathering. And, you know, we had a gathering, uh, our first gathering we had in Vancouver uh, on November the 10th, I believe. And when we walked out uh, from that, uh, uh, Hung, she was the host of it. And uh, she said, look, there's a portal up there and uh, in the sky. And, uh, and she could see it right away. And then I looked up there and my eyes adjusted to it. And yes, I saw a portal that was on, you know, on a, more so horizontal with a little upliftment but it, it was there as well and and that was you know just only one of the what we cause the creations and as i said before if you could imagine the whole light community together in one place uh we would not be here and that is also why everyone has been geographically spaced it was very important where yeah. you were at at all times because uh, if you were to come it's all divinely timed but if you were all to come together uh at certain spots you would have advanced and it would have caused chaos in the divine plan so it was all divinely assured even your geographical locations because there there is no time and everything was known where everyone needs to be to accommodate this ascension. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had, a, a, like I said, we had a couple of huge activations yesterday. <clears throat> so we went for a little ride last night. Morgan started transmitting direct uh, and just came right out. I asked her afterwards, did, did you, have you thought of this before? Did you think, have you written this before? No. And what it was and what I was referring to is that you know, people can call it a council, your higher aspects, you know, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. As we get more and more into it and identify with this essence or that essence or this galactic being or, or this angel or this archangel, whatever it may be. And that what she got was, and we've actually seen evidence of this as we were reviewing it, uh, is that those council, those council personalities, for lack of a better word, are starting to materialize as human incarnations in our earth existence. Yes, and yes, indeed. Yeah, these are, see, this is also why I use uh, what you could, some consider a label, the ascended masters, because what, because really you all are, and as you say, uh, you are beginning to integrate and, and gather together and know that you are, calling and connecting on higher aspects of yourself but also higher aspects of beliefs that were brought into creation so you know even though uh, i may call archangels angels and ascended masters labels they are also very real because they were brought into existence by beliefs for many to access to assist them but you can call them whatever you wish, and you will see, as you're just saying, many finding that they're part of a council as well. But these are higher councils of herself and all of these other labels. It's the overall collective, too. Yeah. Indeed, it is. And, and, and the network is all interconnected, what we yeah. are. 
And I think that's that's an important part, too, that we're coming to is that when we start to communicate with the divine essence and we've all been there, you know, uh, when we start out, it seems very external or it's a galactic and it seems external. And as we go on our journeys, we started to embody these things. And I think that's what I was what I'm trying to, to stress is that as you embody a particular essence, that that particular essence will then incarnate in human form in your life. And, and it won't be called the same name, but that personality, okay, yeah. that, that uh, brother, that sister, uh, that soul family member will incarnate. And we're, we're watching it happen. We had one day, mm -hmm. I think it was the 28th, and we've been, you know, we've been going through this day by day, you know, just, just trusting and moving forward. And I think we well, obviously went, we must have activated or elevated or something. And in one day, three, what I'll call aunties, three aunties, uh, all reached out to us and reached out to Morgan and I and, you know, assisted us as soul family. And the, and the frequency and the vibration, the connection, the resonance felt, felt very, very close. Like they were literally, we we're on the phone with them, but literally standing right next to us. So I think that's another, another thing that we're going to start seeing is the, as you talked about, it's tightening up. We're pulling together and we're going to see more evidence of that. And some of that's going to be right in our face, very literal, very physical. Yeah. Well, also, you know, your by what I call by location properties is a little bit different than uh, multidimensional. The by location, when I mentioned that, it, it's you're actually able to project uh, your your essence, but as the bilocation strengthens, you are also going to be able to actually physically bilocate. And, you know, for my uh, being the teacher that I am uh, with certain ones, uh, I monitor uh, these aspects as a gauge of their development. And I will say that just in the recent past, uh, while uh, speaking with two on the phone that yes uh, their essence uh, was uh, with me so I knew that uh, let me say that their bilocation ability that they could actually project their energy uh, not fully in in a form uh, like a holographic imprint of them but their energy signature was there very powerful that um, let me say that like I read energies I, I knew it was them anyway from the third eye but what I'm saying mm -hmm. is that eventually you you will visually see the see us and we can transport and for you know all intents and purposes and sharing that I have visited many uh, I have also taken on uh, a holographic image along with my essence when it was there to let it be known that it was actually me there and this is also upon your along the lines that each of you uh, can do it with your remote viewing abilities and, and a very powerful divine one while she was uh, remote viewing something not so long ago uh, they actually could see her there which before, you know, uh, but what I, I quickly reminded her is that uh, it, while you're remote viewing, uh, you, you have to disengage the holographic imprint so that you're only there in energy that you cannot be seen. But she was doing divine work, but unknowingly to her, we had advanced or she had advanced to that level that a bilocation through a remote viewing that she was actually beginning to project, uh, you know, a lot of her essence and her image there with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming. Uh, Grace Solaris wrote a post today and talked about there's more fluidity and talked about how things seem to be, things are slowing down. You know, we went for a walk last night and we've had probably three times in the last two or three days where we jump in the car and we say, hey, we're we're in another dimension. You know, I mean, this this isn't where we just were an hour or two ago, whatever. But the every sound, every color, the wind, uh, everything seemed to be it, it was it felt like things were moving slower 
everything was more enhanced. You could hear everything at a, at a more heightened uh, sense, be it, you know, uh, hearing or be it uh, seeing or, or smelling or whatever. Uh, this this seems to be, I think you mentioned something about this on the last show about the expansion of the five senses. I, I don't know if it was you or somebody else, but but that's kind of what I was seeing along with flipping into a higher dimension. Uh, yeah, also there's an expansion on all of, all levels with that, but also the senses, yeah. But, uh, you know, receiving your vivid images as all of you did yeah of course it's very indicative that you're on another timeline also see it, time is not constant and with each timeline you're on time runs different because time is also attached to frequency as well and uh, so that's why time is not constant but then you throw in our ability where we can transcend time we're not restricted by it that we actually we have the abilities and i'll be teaching if i need to more on this in the future how to access how to time travel but some are, are doing it you know now uh through the essence but all of us at this point uh are able to do it depending on if uh, they have opened up that gift and uh, strengthened it and accessed it yet. It, it is there upon divine approval is what I'm given. That is governed because it's in accordance with divine uh, timing and the advancement of the collective as well. Uh, it, it's divine timing is very meticulous because it's uh it's, well it, it is it's very meticulous and having said that uh what you do you do not really have the free will uh but what you do is you just surrender uh and when you're allowed to proceed with things then it is divinely supported as well so yet here, no one has, no, you do not have full free will. As many of you uh, will know, you are divinely assured and guided uh, to be in the most divine favorable place that you must be at any time to ensure your growth in conjunction and in con congruently with all of your other comrades in the divine timing. So everything is is designed and you don't have free will on that at this time yeah yeah and i think the other thing that comes to mind too as we start uh, heading out the door is that whether it be the bilocation uh whether it be the other expanded skills and abilities whether it be create conscious creation and dimension uh utilizing the imagination time travel whatever it may be these things are going to expand based on how much we move with them, how much faith we walk towards them or through them or with them. Yes. Uh, it's not going to happen uh, if we sit here and, and do nothing. And I think that's really uh, where I see the corner has been turned is people are beginning to take actions uh, in yeah. alignment with what they're receiving from their entire multidimensional uh, makeup. Thank you so much. That's so important that you brought that up. Yes, we do not wish for stagnation, like, for instance, someone following, you know, all of your videos, you're putting out all of your teachings and do nothing about it individually. That does not get them there. They become stagnant. You know, whatever resonates with them to do, we need them to do it individually to empower themselves. And that's what gets them out of here. It, it's not enough for them to just watch everything and not do anything. And, and, and that is so important as well. And, and it, lightens, it lightens the overall load when everyone participates and know that they are responsible to follow their inner guidance, but they are also responsible to act on it, as you just said, and that is so important. Yeah, it gets uh, quicker. 
Deborah Gen- uh, Deborah Genori put what you said in another way, which I think it, we're seeing evidence of this too. It says again, I agree with Rick. Our free will isn't as free as we think. We have a calling that we can't walk from. I'm seeing this happen in some of these conversations yeah. that I'm having. And what it is, is you're seeing evidence of people ignoring their calling, ignoring the signs they're getting. And I've heard and seen some somewhat extreme examples of what's happening in their personal lives in forms of physical manifestation like I've never seen before. You know, mm-hmm. you can actually see the the uh, the uh, denial or the avoidance of the energetic calling or impression that the human aspect is using that other side of free will and saying no. But we, we I, I agree with what you said. I like the way she said it. I know that's what you're saying too. We have a calling. We have a role. And mm-hmm. uh, and that's and that is uh, a, a very loud voice that's getting louder and louder. And if we don't it listen is, to it, uh, the ramifications it, it are going to be that you got to. Yeah. So you it really you don't have that choice in, in the matter. Yeah. You know, you have your free will what to choose in your cho You're showing the options of what to choose. But it's all in your heart. You know to choose the good and the right things and to unite with your others. You know that separation is lonely. You don't want lonely. So you follow all the feelings in your heart and keep connecting and advance yourself forward. Yeah, that's the uh, – I think that's probably been the big thing I've taken away from the last month of shows is – Regardless of, of, of everything else, if you simplify it, what what are you aligned with in your heart that only you know and the universe really knows? Uh, if you hold that space, things start coming to you and you're doing less chasing and then there's more coming to you versus you having to go to it. That's what I'm Very. that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. yeah. And so I mean, totally, that kind of simplifies it, yeah. And you're, you're totally correct. And again, thank you, because this is so important. The easiest way, as you said, is don't go out searching for it. Because when you go out searching for it, you're, you're trying to control how it will come. And you have expectations. And what that will do, it will restrict what you receive and also you're trying to control it from a human aspect that has yeah. logic and rationale and you just will not find it that way what you the way to find it is that you it is to be uh, fully open and let it come to you that is the easiest way you don't drain your energy thank you you don't drain your energy and you evolve so much quicker but you also have to trust what you're given. And even if it defies human logic and rationale, yeah. <laughs> you have to follow it. Because what you are entering, you're breaking out of human. You're no longer human anymore. So you do not use the human laws to perceive or respect something that is not human. It does not equate. It will confuse you. So you have to trust. And yeah, it's a blind trust, a, a, you know, a blind leap, whatever, or a leap of faith. But you have yeah. to take that to advance you forward much quicker. And that is the surrender as well, which everyone, yeah. you know, you'll have many that will attest to this. Yeah. that They had to surrender to it and then boom, everything yeah. opens wide open to them. Doors began to open eureka moments light bulbs go off uh beautiful confirmations around them yeah yeah and i think the difference here is we came out of a paradigm that the leaps of faith so to speak that we took were based on a belief system you know a condition a conditioning a cultural uh conditioning or whatever it may be family conditioning country conditioning but now we're taking this leap of faith based on straight direct intuitive communication from infinite intelligence and everybody's getting it uh it's just a matter of following it now so so that's a you know it's it's a new world and that sounds like a pretty easy way to maneuver it is to listen to your higher aspects as opposed to 
ignoring them and thinking you're crazy because there's enough of us out there to prove that's not crazy anymore. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that number's yeah. growing every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Now, are you going to be doing anything in the next uh, week? Is there anything you want to alert everybody to? You're going to be on any shows or anything like that? You got anything going on up in Vancouver? Um, it, not right at this time. Uh, I'm on a, as you know, Todd, I'm, I'm pretty well on the spontaneous basis that I don't really make uh, plans. But having yeah. said that, I do feel, Todd, that, yeah, there may be some higher things going on in the future up here, maybe another gathering. But, uh, I'm, you know, uh, I go with what I'm given, and that come, when it comes in, then I put it out. But I, I don't. Yeah. For what I am, I don't restrict the future because I am part of the divine plan and I'm I'm pushed where I need to go and guided to it on a need to know basis. So that's I'm right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I totally identify with that. Well, I appreciate I, I will, it, brother. I will share with your viewers that yeah. uh, I was kind of complaining to dad that I've been in jail here for the last few weeks. I had to remain where I was at. I said, come on, dad, you know, when can I go? But you no, know, I, was, I was told I had to stay here. So, uh, yeah, I listened to it and do it. Hey, if I didn't yeah. stay here, we might be having the show, right? So That's everything right. for a reason, and you got to go with it and trust it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate it, brother, like always. I love collaborating with you. Thank you so much for the work you're doing out there. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Yeah, well, thank you so much. And I'll give you a kiss. I don't think more <laughs> important will mind. And <laughs> all the <laughs> and peace and love, brother, and winks and all, all right. that good stuff. Thank you so right. much. You guys have a fantastic time. Woo! <laughs> right, you take care, Rick. Take care.